So good afternoon, all of you. I hope I'm audible and visible. Please give me a quick thumbs up, all my dear students. Uh, Rajdeep, Mani, uh, Kilwith, Dr. GK, Tejashwini, everybody will give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine. And after a long time, I've seen you, Mani East. So, Shalom, Kalyan, uh, Anixen, Preeti, Vaishnavi, Nimisha, all of the students are welcome in the class. Uh, just give me a second. I'm uploading the file for all of you. <clears throat> amazing. So welcome back all my dear students to this amazing session of Dermatology with me, Dr. Cheshta Agarwal. Very, very important session. So uh, I think everybody is following my sessions uh, of FMG, target FMG sessions every day 2.30. Tomorrow at 9 p.m. I will be conducting a special class for INI CT also. And I request all my students to please be a part of it, okay? All my INICT aspirants, please be live tomorrow at 9 p.m. as well. Okay, G? Okay. Now, uh, till the others join, let us introduce some of the uh, you know, new courses or some of the new features of An Academy with everyone. I'm Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, your NEET PG educator on An Academy, and I've myself scored All India Rank 261 in my NEET PG entrance examination. At An Academy, we give you a lot of free classes, which is known as special class. And right now, you are in a special free class. Now, what is the difference between a special class and a plus class? Plus classes are the paid subscriptions of an academy, which give you live recorded sessions. You have a lot of uh, you know, courses from the top educators. So you have a separate course for INICT, separate course for NEED PG, FMG by different educators. Uh, you know, like they are specifically dedicated to a particular exam. Now we have uh, access to around 25,000 plus questions and we have printed notes facility available. Uh, if you take a 12 month uh, plus subscription, you can get a printed notes facility available. Now with iconic subscription, we give you an access to both an academy and prep ladder together. We give you an access to both an academy and prep ladder. Prep ladder has uh, the video lectures, recorded sessions, clinical integrated essentials, question bank, rapid revision snapshots, etc. Now we have uh, we are uh, we have planned a free grant test for both FMG and INIS. So we have an exam day uh, scheduled for uh, FMG on 17th October, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And for INIS CT, it is 17th October, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. I request all my students to please give this. This is a free test. You just need to enroll it. And for enrolling, you might need a code. So please use this code. This is absolutely free. These mock tests will give you a lot of ideas, like how you will get the questions. And uh, you know, like you will have a habit of giving the exam, the whole 19 subjects all together. Now, uh, we have a highly effective question bank of around 25,000 plus questions. And uh, we have recently introduced a feature of raise a hand where you can record your question and it can be heard by the educator or your co-learners. Many new batches like clinical case discussion or instrument batch starting on 13th. Then we have a uh, next 23 batch again starting on 13th and a neat PG batch starting on 13th. Now I request all my students to please be a part of it if you are targeting neat PG entrance examination. And as I always say, we are expecting it to be a little early. Do not think that this year the exam was so late. So it will be on or in September the next year as well. No, that is not at all the chances. If there is no uh, another wave of COVID, you can expect me PG maybe in February or March. So be prepared, start preparing. You have only six months. And that is why I request all of you to please take an academy subscription, start preparing. This year, we had a 100% strike rate for all the questions of NEET PG. And I want you to uh, utilize this feature, try to get the experience of all the educators who can help you in cracking your exam. So these are the prize list for Iconic, which gives you an access to an academy and prep ladder. We have one year and longer subscription. But for plus, we also provide shorter subscriptions of three months and six months. So FMG students can take a three month and the need PG students can take a six month or maybe a one year subscription, whatever suits you. Please don't forget to use the referral code Cheshta10. 
please do not forget to use a referral code chesta10 to get additional 10% discount on the subscription now please give me a thumbs up if everybody is ready with the today's session very very important we have a rapid revision of the questions which you can expect along with some of the discussions of the theory part starting with the first question your time starts now which of the following statement about lichen planus is false oral lp is the most common autoimmune condition of the oral cavity dental amalgam stress are the causative factors malignant transformation never occurs reticulate pattern is the most common pattern vaishnavi lega shatnik mani rameshwar very well done richa anand dr gk shakti bhavesh dr rashmi in in sam very nice i request all the students to please try to answer the question false about oral lichen planus please remember oral lp is the most common autoimmune condition of the oral cavity dental amalgam which consists of mercury is the most common predisposing factor again a correct statement and reticulate pattern is the commonest pattern please remember there is another uh, pattern which is known as erosive pattern which is a very rare type of lichen planus but this type of lichen planus has a probability or has a chance of getting converted into malignancy so malignant transformation never occurs it is a incorrect statement you can see malignant transformation in erosive oral lp patients clear you can see them in erosive oral lp i hope this is clear to everyone please give me a quick thumbs up please give me a quick thumbs up if you have understood this point okay ji amazing amazing chalo aage badhe scarring alopecia is seen in where do you see scarring type of alopecia there are four uh, options and all these are the variants of lichen planus amazing rajdeep amazing richa rajdeep sangeeta absolutely right so only three students till now out of 35 to 40 students which we have only three students you can see how you all are performing please remember this year we got a question if you remember we got a question on pemphigus how many of you have seen this year neat pg paper can you just raise hands for me how many of you have seen the neat pg paper yes so there was a question on pemphigus that a patient presents with flaccid bullet oral cavity lesions and supra basal acantholysis or supra basal split the question was very easy but the options were difficult the options were pemphigus vulgaris foliaceous pemphigus vegetans or there was one more option so they are giving you options among the variant and the same thing is here you know that lichen planus is associated with scarring alopecia but which variant of lichen planus is associated with scarring alopecia please remember the one which is associated or which is present on the hair the one which is present on the hair is lichen plano pilaris understood lichen plano pilaris is the lichen planus of scalp and obviously it should be on the scalp to produce scarring type of alopecia clear or not i would request a quick thumbs up for all my dear students very nice scarring alopecia is seen in please remember this is the answer and uh, scarring alopecia other than lichen planus can you tell me what are the other conditions other than lichen planus please remember dle very important lichen planus we have already read third is tinea capitis inflammatory type tinea capitis inflammatory type that is kirion or flavus fourth is fourth is what sam rushika punnima nadi anisha kanapa can you tell me the answer okay ji so please remember the option number fourth is any uh, infiltrative or any uh, uh, metabolic disorder like uh, uh, sarcoidosis even in cancers in bacterial conditions like dissecting folliculitis of scalp all these are the causative agent for scarring alopecia along with that you have one more option and what is that option that is idiopathic cause which is pseudo pellard of brook pseudo pellard of brook pseudo pellard of brook 
I hope this is clear to all of you. ठीक है आगे बढ़े शुड यू गो टू दी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ठीक है जी ओके आइडेंटिफाई दी फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट इन मैनेजमेंट आइडेंटिफाई दी फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट इन मैनेजमेंट ऑफ लाइक एंड प्लेनस ओरल स्टीरोइड्स आर द मेन स्टे ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट रेटिनोइड हैज बीन यूज्ड इंट्रालीजनल स्टीरोइड्स आर इंडिकेटेड इन हाइपरट्रॉफिक एनपी और सिस्टेमिक थेरेपी very nice all of you so identify the false statement in management of lichen planus please remember the first treatment option should always be topical steroids so lega sam aradhana then we have who else nimesha rbg uh kaushik nityananda please remember please remember the treatment of choice is always the topical steroids not oral and that is i see option number 1 and 4 do you think that they are contradictory statement how many of you like even if you are not aware about the answer you can be sure that either 1 or 4 that should be the answer how many of you have understood this anyone so i'm telling you how to come to a diagnosis or how to come to the answer where only two options are difficult so retinoids can be used and intralesional can be used this if you are not aware the option number 1 is exactly opposite of option number 4 if this is right this should be wrong if this is wrong this should be right so that that is the way you can solve the question please remember systemic therapy is not commonly used we first try with topical and if topical is not working or if a patient request you for oral or if he wants a quick treatment of generalized lesion then you will give the uh, oral medicines otherwise topical would be preferred okay otherwise topical would be preferred coming to the next option next question the disease shown in the image is associated with a uh, very nice please remember the diagnosis can you tell me what is the diagnosis here what is the diagnosis here anyone the diagnosis is lichen planus and please remember lichen planus is associated with all these if you remember one autoimmune condition is always associated with other autoimmune conditions so here also lichen planus is associated with lot of other autoimmune conditions and this is the list you can just go through this list of lichen planus and its association just give me a second i will close my door there's a lot of noise coming from outside so you just solve this question i'll close my door histopathological feature of lichen planus are saw toothing of epidermis civet bodies max joseph space or all of the above theek okay? hai so what is the answer lega sam sangeeta dr gk rashmi bhavya manish nimisha yogesh very well done all my dear students all of the above is the answer and if you remember we have done a very similar question yesterday also how many of you were live in my yesterday's uh, class the main problem in lichen planus is you have autoimmune T lymphocyte which are directed against stratum basal. So what they will do? They will come. They will destroy the stratum basal, and at those areas where the uh, cells are destroyed, they will form a body which is known as civet bodies or colloid bodies. And with time, these bodies are absorbed, leaving behind an empty space which is known as Max Joseph space. So I think this was a very easy and uh, repeat question from the yesterday's class. Now this is a true and false question. the herald patch appears after the cutaneous lesions of petrasis rosea appears so i hope you understood 
herald patch appears after the lesions of petriasis rosea appears you have to tell me whether it is true or false your time starts now very nice uh, but we have uh, not much difference 50 50 result please remember the herald patch is the first patch to appear and after that you develop the cutaneous lesion and that is why you call herald patch as mother patch how many of you remember this how many of you remember this that herald patch is known as the mother patch how many of you remember this point please give me a quick thumbs up barsat naveen kinu bilal Shatnik, Shakti, Yogesh, everyone. So please remember that the herald patch appears after the cutaneous lesions or before the cutaneous lesions. And these cutaneous lesions are then known as daughter patches. And can you tell me what type of appearance you see in these daughter lesions? You see what is known as Christmas tree or fur tree appearance. Christmas tree or fur tree appearance. There is one more appearance. Now, if you can see here, uh, see this lesion, can you see these uh, striations? Just give me a thumbs up if you can see these striations on the lesions. The Here it is actually horizontal, uh, horizontal, but they are vertical. This image is actually a little bit uh, rotated. So this appearance of multiple <laughs> Yes, uh, Shakti, it's a very nice uh, comparison, cigarette paper scaling. But this is not cigarette paper scaling. Scaling is only at the margin. You have a lot of wrinkle-like appearance. And this is known as hanging curtain sign. Hanging curtain sign, which is seen in the patients of Petriasis rosea. These scales are collarate scale, co collar-like. Like if you are wearing collar right now, you can, you can observe that collar is attached only from one end to the shirt. Another end is free. Same thing happens here. So colorate scale is with respect to the scales and the hanging curtain is with respect to the block. Everyone will give me a quick thumbs up if you have understood this. Fata fat say as early as possible, give me a thumbs up. Amazing, amazing, amazing. This is a very frequent question or I should say favorite question of a lot of exams, whether it is FMG, whether it is NEET, PG, INI, CT. This is something which is very frequently asked either this or annular lesion or something like that so they keep on changing the image and they keep on changing the question ravi mani lega sam shatnek dr rashmi khushbu sangeeta nityananda rajdeep pracha Aradhana, Faith, Naveen, Insan, Purnima, Rameshwar, very well done all my dear students, very nice and I am very very happy that you have understood this. Coin like lesions are characteristic of, coin like lesions are characteristic of numular eczema or discoid eczema, numular eczema or discoid eczema. Can you see they are like disc, numular coin like or discoid dermatitis is just how this lesion look like now there are many students who always ask me that ma'am what is the difference between a discoid lesion and a annular lesion so dis uh, discoid lesions will have a uniform consistency throughout like this which we are seeing here you have uniform consistency throughout but what about annular Annular can be of any shape. It can be round also. It can be irregular also. But how to differentiate it from uh, a discoid? In annular lesion, the consistency of periphery is different from the consistency of the center. For example, tinea, where you have central clearing. TB, where you have central scarring. And leishmaniasis, where you have central crusting. So like this, we have the annular lesion three different ways. It can be like this as well, where the periphery is different than the center. Clear the difference? Please give me a thumbs up if you understood. So if you get a question, please do not confuse it. If you see uniform uh, lesions throughout, if you see uniform lesions like this, it should be a discoid dermatitis. 
so in fmg we have got both the questions discoid ka bhi and annular ka bhi so we can expect any of this getting repeated again okay can you tell me the answer here aradhna dr gk ravi purnima very nice and i would request all of you to please do not write anything with respect to the question on the chat section until unless i ask you so so shatnik i know you know it but please do not write because other students will get confused and they will get biased towards the answer okay so you are absolutely right that here you can see now whenever you get a histopath what will be your first aim or what should you do first try to look for dermo epidermal junction clear or not so in this question or in this image let us first mark the dermo epidermal junction which is somewhere here agree with me and we all know that dermo epidermal junction is not smooth it has what is this downward projections what are these downward projections please make this class more interactive i know you all are feeling sleepy i am also feeling sleepy but i'm taking tea to uh, come out of it because i do come at 1 pm from hospital then i quickly eat my uh, you know lunch i feed my daughter and then i uh, sit and take your class so please be with me so this is known as rete ridges rete koshik rete is the downward projections of the epidermis and papilla is the upward projection of the dermis samajh gaye difference koshik please give me a thumbs up koshik if you understood what is papilla and what is ridges okay now i request all of you koshik Please subscribe to an academy. Try to take a shortest subscription, three month, six month. Let you see. You need to understand all the topic from concept. Then only you will able to solve the questions. Okay. So try to attend the classes which I do take on plus subscription. Use my referral code Cheshta ten for subscription. Okay, ji. Okay. So what I was teaching, I was telling you that first of all, whenever you get a histopath question, always try to mark dermo epidermal junction. Okay. now why i'm saying so because you can make out the pathology whether it is in dermis or in epidermis and then it will become very easy for you to solve the question theek hai now here tell me where is the pathology epidermis or dermis is it above or below anyone where is the pathology sabko dikh raha hai ki pathology is somewhere here compared to this this has what how this place is different from this place can you see a lot of white white empty spaces here can you see white white empty spaces so what are these these are intercellular edema these cells got separated because of fluid in between them and please remember whenever you do a histopath the fluid will appear white okay so there is spacing or gapping between these cells and this is known histopathologically as spongiosis or inter cellular edema spongiosis or intercellular edema and this is a feature of what this is a feature of acute eczema please remember this is a feature of acute eczema and the answer becomes option number 1 so i hope this is clear to all of all of you a very easy and interesting question any confusion with this aage badhe should we go to the next question chalo now this is a little bit of physics question but you got this question in your exam and that is why i have to keep it here amazing lega bhavya yogesh richa ravi action spectrum of uvb action spectrum of uvb do you all have any class at 3 pm because suddenly jaise hi 3 pm hota hai students ekdam kam ho jate hain is that do you have any class at 3 pm scheduled class no i don't know what happens maybe it take 30 minutes for you to go to uh, rem sleep <laughs> and that is why you people suddenly after 30 minutes there's a dip in the student count so at 4 we have gym wah bhaiya badhiya badhiya baat hai so we we do not get time to go to gym and it's good it's good for health 
ओ अच्छा गई नहीं है ओ माय बैड ओके 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 आई एम वेरी बैड इन शॉर्ट फॉर्म्स वेरी वेरी बैड इन शॉर्ट फॉर्म्स स्पेसिफिकली यू नो नाउ डेज दे दे गिव यू मैसेजेस राइट दे राइट ओनली टू टू वर्ड्स टीसी आई वाज नॉट अवेयर व्हाट दिस टीसी मींस ट्रांसफर सर्टिफिकेट after what i came to know that it means take care yes i know so it has a complete different vocabulary they should make the uh, dictionary for short forms as well short forms are in derma i think are yaar dermatology mein to i am not using any short forms am i or i am using any short forms yes okay ji chalo but i am very very bad in the short forms so please do not write the short forms like for yes you write uh, you know uh, why so why can be for why also right so that is something which i feel very difficult to understand very very difficult to understand okay so please write full forms because i am very very uh, bad in uh, you know understanding the short forms okay ji so the action spectrum of uv b rays what is the action spectrum of uv b rays please remember all of you electromagnetic spectrum have gamma rays which is the shortest and radio wave which is the longest okay so that is the spectrum uvb is somewhere here where c is from 100 to 280 or 290 nanometers b is from 280 to 90 to 320 and uva is from 320 to 400 nanometers from 400 to 700 we have visible spectrum and beyond 700 we have infrared so i think you have observed that uh, you know like when you are standing under the sunlight uh, you can see all the objects okay whenever like obviously when you compare the uh, mornings from the night in morning you can see everything because the light falls on the earth and it is get it is reflecting back and that is uh, making the objects visible to you so that is visible spectrum you have also noticed that when you stand under the sun you feel very warm like uh, you feel heat in uh, in contact of you that is the infrared okay and uv radiation you cannot feel it but it has a lot of effect tanning burning malignancy so all these effect is because of uv radiation so these three has a direct role on our skin okay microwave obviously do not cause any direct uh, effect on the skin x rays are so low wavelength that it can completely cross through your body and that is why we are using it as a diagnostic modality okay ji understood a very simple basic uh which rays for vitamin d yeah you have to tell me the answer which rays for vitamin d anyone can tell me the answer koshik is asking one thing very nice koshik you already know the answer it is uvb radiation okay it is uvb and even if you don't know uvb please remember uv radiation okay uv radiation is the answer okay you are absolutely right koshik it is uvb okay ji aage badhe should we go to the next question okay suppose if you are going uh to your college on a bike and your friend is going to the college in his car okay who will be uh or which rays will not affect the uh, friend or the patient or the student who is going inside the car so that was one of the question very very recently that a patient he travels to the office every time on car okay so my alarm has rang okay ji chalo so very interesting question actually please remember a simple glass reflects the uvb radiations completely a simple glass can reflect the uvb rays completely so for example if you are going out simply putting a glass window will protect you from uvb and i hope you remember uvb has a maximum skin burn potential plus plus other than skin burn it can also it was also causing skin malignancy okay so you can protect your skin from both these by using a simple glass window okay uva can uh, cross or penetrate uva can cross or penetrate both these layers chalo ji very very nice let's move to the next question aage badhe should should we go to the next one okay
वेरी नाइस शातनिक लेगा रिचा रवि देन वी हैव राजदीप नित्यानंदा भव्या तेजस्विनी फेत इन इंसाम नई मिशा वेरी वेल डन बिलाल कौशिक a 55 year old male presented with eg like any five plaques over the forehead cheek nose and v area of neck for five years there was sparing of upper eyelid and creases so one thing which you are observing here is only the exposed part forehead cheek nose and v area which is the exposed part is getting affected and please remember whenever it is exposed it is sun induced dermatitis what about airborne airborne contact dermatitis occurs because of pollen grains the pollen which is released from the plants now please remember these pollens they can accumulate on the flexures like if you have dust or you have a sand storm and you are standing in the sand you will observe that all the creases will have a lot of sand particles but the exposed area or the convex part will not have any sand particle in them same thing if you have lot of uh, pollens floating on your skin or in the air they will start accumulating themselves in the creases causing involvement of upper eyelid and skin creases clear all of you and in actinic dermatitis please remember it is also sun induced but it is chronic sun exposure which causes lichenification but that is not given lichenification in the form of uh, you have senile comedones and you have thick plaque over the forehead clear all of you so actinic is very similar but it is a different variant which has presence of lot of senile comedones in them okay ji now coming to the next question which of the following test is considered to be the gold standard for epidermolysis bullosa which of the following is the gold standard uh irritant contact dermatitis example ma'am this i'm not able to understand ravi your question no no this is uh, uh, photodermatitis is an example of allergic contact dermatitis or I, actually it is neither allergic you will keep it under the uh, exogenous eczemas so we have three type of exogenous eczema one is contact dermatitis which occurs because of contact with the allergen second is photo and third is phyto which is also known as airborne contact dermatitis theek hai ji dr gk bhavya priya very well done all of you now gold standard for epidermolysis bullosa which is a mechanobullous disorder is electron microscopy please remember electron microscopy is considered to be the gold standard for the epidermolysis bullosa can you tell me the direct immunofluorescence is used for which type of bullous disorders which broad group of bullous disorders are treated or uh, investigated it is the immunobullous very nice ravi we have divided them into three groups immunobullous mechanobullous and congenital so immunobullous where you have auto antibodies you can use direct immunofluorescence to map the location of the antibodies clear chalo badhiya very nice very nice richa ravi priya eosinophils or zinc smear is seen in pemphigus vulgaris pemphigus foliaceus bullous pemphigoid or iga pemphigus or iga pemphigus now please remember the correct answer is given to me by only few students only few students the answer is bullous pemphigoid what do you see in pemphigus vulgaris when you do a zinc smear you see acantholytic cells what about pemphigus foliaceus again acantholytic cells and what about pemphigus iga pemphigus again acantholytic cells the inflammatory cells are only the feature of sub epidermal bulla very nice shatnik you have understood it very very correctly clear with this question okay 
which of the following auto antibodies are commonly found in the circulations which of the following is commonly found in the circulations of dermatitis herpetiformis again i am requesting that this topic immunobullous disorders vesicular disorders they are very very important every time one or two question is for sure from this topic so if you find any difficulty please join my plus course we are uh, starting the neat pg batch tomorrow so please join today using the referral code jstar10 you can go for a 6 month or a 1 year subscription of an academy either you can go for a plus or iconic but please use my code if you get a 1 year subscription you will also get the printed notes you will also get the printed okay so ravi mani lega very well done all my dear students very well done all my dear students which of the autoantibodies are commonly found in circulation with dermatitis herpetiformis? The correct answer is anti-epidermal transglutaminase. Okay. You do not see any basement membrane zone antibody. No anti-basement membrane zone antibody. You see antibody against the tissue transglutaminase and it will cross-react with epidermal transglutaminase causing the problem. Is this clear or not? How many students know what is the pathogenesis of dermatitis herpetiformis is? If you don't, please, please join my course. You don't have much time with you. Okay. Coming to the next question. Check the MDT schedule in adult leprosy and mark the correct option. So which of the following is the correct option? Rifampicin, clofazamine, Dapson. Check the MDT schedule in adult depressy and mark the correct option. Lega, Tariq, and Sam. Uh, Mulai, Rahul, Rajdeep, Nityananda, Racha, Ravi, Shakti. Very well done. I think everybody knows this. So please remember the Depson dose which is given is 100 mg per day unsupervised. It is not 50 mg. So if you have to choose uh, the correct answer, the 1, 2 and 4 is correct. So option number 1 is the answer. Clear or not, all of you will give me a quick, quick thumbs up. Okay, ji, aage bar jai. Okay, thumbs up. Okay. Are you all enjoying or feeling sleepy? No? Chalo ji. So how is the Josh? High or low? How is the Josh? Very low. Very, very low. <laughs> okay, ji, fine. Chalo. Chalo. Okay, okay. It's, it's high. It's high. Okay, okay. Now, coming to the next question. Which of the following is not a, not a component of Sarfo syndrome? Which of the following is not the component of Sarfo syndrome? Synovitis, acne, hyperostosis, or seboria? Very nice. Everybody is aware. Everybody is aware. Clofazamine alternate day? No. Shakti, uh, uh, Shatnik, clofazamine is every day in adult. In children, it is alternate day. The dose is same. But in children, it is alternate day. And in adult, it is every day. Okay, ji? Okay, so Ravi, Shatnik, GK, Jayud, Dr. Tarek, Lega, Rajdeep, Faith, Insan, Insam, Amir, uh, Dr. Rashmi, Kosik, very well done, all of you. Now, what is Sapho syndrome? Can you can you write the full thing? What does S stands for? It stands for synovitis. A stands for acne. What does P stands for? Anyone? Pustules or pustulosis. P stands for pustulosis. O stands for hyperostosis. Hyperostosis. And O stands for osteitis. Okay. So that is Sarfo syndrome. Can you tell me what is Saha? This is also seen in acne only. What is Saha syndrome? Anyone? Anyone? So all my plus students and other students, I request you to please write it down. Saha means S is for Siboria. Very nice, Ravi. That is the difference, okay? 
Sapo DS was cyanomatous, but here the S is seborrhea. A for acne. Then H is for hyper. What is H for? Hyper trichosis or hyperandrogenism. And A is for acanthosis nigricans. So H, please write hyperandrogenism. In hyperandrogenism, you have all the features of acne, hair, etc. Okay, Shatnik, understood? Yes, very nice. Chalo ji. So we are done with this and we have one more syndrome. Papa. Can you tell me what is Papa syndrome? Anyone? Should I give this as a homework or you want to write it down? What is the full form of Papa syndrome? Pyoderma gangrenosum. Acne and pyogenic arthritis. That is Papa syndrome. Take care. Clear? Amir, Priyanka, please give me a thumbs up if you understood. And the next is hair and syndrome. Hair and syndrome. Hair and syndrome. Yes, even hirsutism, definitely. Any confusion? Papa syndrome? Ravi, Shatnik? What is hair and syndrome? Can you tell me? Acanthosis nigricans? I N. I R is for insulin resistance and H is for hyperandrogenism. Hyperandrogenism. Clear? Clear? Please give me a thumbs up, all my dear students, if you understood. Okay. Uh, is there any confusion going on, Amir? Amir, is there any confusion? Uh, okay. So I think you are getting confused in Saha syndrome, Amir. This H is hirsutism, and that is what is known as. This is the hirsutism. That is uh, that is what is known as increase in the hairs of the hyperandrogenism. Hirsutism. Then in PAPA we don't have any hirsutism. That is Papa syndrome. Uh, pyogenic arthritis, pyoderma gangrenosum and acne, and in here and you have hyperandrogenism, insulin resistance, and acanthosis nigricans. If this is clear, I request a quick thumbs up from everyone. Aage bade, should we go to the next question? Chalo, amazing. The next question is here on your screen. Patient presented with around 10 to 20 bilateral but asymmetrical erythematous infiltrated plaque. Okay, gee. now here they have given you a very, very classical image of what is known as inverted saucer. I hope you know what is an inverted saucer. I hope you all know what is an inverted saucer. And let me just show you a inverted saucer. Inverted saucer shape appearance, which is very, very amazing. And... Uh, I will be sharing my screen, all of you. I will be sharing my screen. 
so please have a look on the uh, image which i'm showing you on google so just give me a second a uh, inverted saucer actually uh, they have it here this is this is a saucer right if you take it ulta upside down like <coughs> can you see this image no not this one this one please give me a thumbs up if all of you can see this image please give me a quick thumbs up yes so you can see that the central part is little uh, prolonged or little dip so that is what is known as inverted saucer shaped appearance which is very very classical of bb hansen okay so it is upside down can you tell me can you tell me one thing the inverted saucer everybody knows that it is present in bb what about the saucer upside inverted nahi ulta saucer is exactly on the upside not the ulta position can you tell me in which condition you will see the upside saucer no yeah i am asking you with respect to leprosy only okay i am asking with respect to leprosy only so one is saucer like this and one is saucer like this theek hai so inverted saucer we have discussed just now it is the bb but what about this please remember only ravi have given me the correct answer it is the tp and if you remember i teach this in my class that the inner margin is sloping and the outer margin is perpendicular like a stadium it's a very classical feature of tp leprosy while in bb leprosy you will see that the inner margin is perpendicular it is somewhat like this the inner margin is perpendicular and the outer margins are sloping and the outer margins are sloping it tells you or it gives you an idea that the disease is spreading clear tarik rajdeep shatnik ravi dr gk everyone will give me a quick thumbs up if you understood this point okay okay fine coming to the next question on your computer screen fatafat se quickly answer this one we have only 10 minutes left with us uh i think the question is not visible is it visible now a 4 year old child presented with painful eruptions affecting the flexures patient was hospitalized and on examination there was erythema with peeling blistering of the skin around the eyelid uh groin and the natal cleft you could see small flaccid blisters present at the margin of the affected areas now can anybody tell me what is so classical about this disease just look at the image and tell me what is so classical about the lesions here anyone can you see there is a large there is a large settled bulla and surrounding this you can see there are multiple small vesicles theek okay. hai this is known as string of pearl or cluster of jewel this is known as string of pearl or cluster of jewel appearance understood please give me a quick thumbs up if you all have understood this point string of pearl or cluster of jewel and you all i think you remember yesterday we have done a question that bp antigen 2 is seen in which all bp antigen 2 is target in bullus pemphigoid pemphigoid gestationalis and in iga linear iga disease or chronic bullus dermatosus of childhood and the answer becomes option number 2 clear for understanding them more in detail please join my plus course use my code the the seats are getting filled soon so please please take your seat uh, start preparing with us don't waste much time in thinking theek hai ji okay now moving to another question this is a assertion reason type question don't think that in fmg ma'am it is not possible to get these questions nothing is impossible you need to know what are the different things so try to answer this question whether whether uh, both assertion and reason is correct or if any one of them is wrong
row of tombstone is seen on history in pemphigus vulgaris very nice lega rahul insan dr tarik kanappa then we have rashmi okay that's it we don't have much students who have answered this question row of tombstone is seen in the histology of pemphigus vulgaris first of all tell me whether this is true or false everyone true or false sab log jawab do yaar everybody will speak this is not your exam this is not your viva i am your friend i am not your teacher so try to answer galat bhi hoga to kya hoga theek hai yes so this is a true statement this is a true statement this is a true statement hemidesmosome is not affected in pemphigus is it a true statement or false true hai ki false hai okay very well done very well done so please remember tarik it is a true statement please remember it is a true statement hemidesmosomes are absolutely normal in patients of pemphigus vulgaris we only have antibodies against desmosomes and its component hemidesmosome which is actually present in between the stratum basal and basement membrane is normal now just think and tell me agar hemidesmosome normal hai if hemidesmosome is normal will you see the intact stratum basal like this answer is yes and that is why the reason is the correct explanation of assertion because you have hemidesmosome here which is absolutely normal hemidesmosome is here which is absolutely normal clear or not shakti richa tejaswini kaushik priyanka dr tarik all my dear students will give me a quick thumbs up if you understood theek hai ji chalo ji badhiya badhiya now this was a very interesting question actually concept based now should i give you one more question like this yes or no but hemidesmosomes are not affected in pemphigus coleus but there we won't get the row of tombs ravi can you tell me the reason can you tell me the reason of your uh, of your question or can you tell me the answer of your question you know it why in pemphigus coleus there is no row of tombstone very nice money is because in pemphigus coleus the target antigen is desmoglein 1 and desmoglein 1 is located very above it is located at the stratum corneum or stratum granulosum level to usse baad to bahut sara stratum spinosum rahega right so you cannot easily make out the intact stratum basal stratum basal wahan par bhi intact hoga i i i'll just demonstrate this with the help of a diagram i think this will help understand this clear can you tell me what is this layer quickly tell me which layer is this first one second one then third one yes i think everybody knows these layers so first is corneum then second wala granulosum and all these golas are in stratum spinosum and then you have a columnar tall columnar cell layer then you have a tall columnar cell layer like this clear you have a tall columnar cell layer like this a tall columnar cell layer like this now what happens in pemphigus coleus you have antibodies against desmoglein 1 and please remember desmoglein 1 is somewhere here desmoglein 1 is the component of desmosomes which are present in a little superficial layer now i want who have asked me that question ravi i just want you to imagine that this area is having a blister will you see any row of tombstone here also the stratum basal is intact but because of lot of cells here it is very difficult to demonstrate a row of tombstone appearance but again i am drawing the stratum corneum or uh, stratum granulosum and i am drawing some of the cells of stratum spinosum where is the problem in uh, the patients of uh, vulgaris here in vulgaris you have problem here so what happens with time you have loss of these cells now can you appreciate the uh, cells the stratum basal present very very separately and very very distinctly attached to the lower so please remember in both of them in both of them the stratum basal remains attached but it is more perceivable in the supra basal cleft because all the cells above it is lost and it is less perceivable in the subcorneal split because you have the other 
cell layer impact clear or not all my other students give me a thumbs up so if you want to learn all the dermatology concepts like this please join my course please use the referral code cheshta10 and subscribe to an academy like me there are a lot of educators of different subjects who are giving their best and helping you crack your exam helping you cross this difficult pathway of pre pg preparation so please trust an academy and use my code cheshta10 to subscribe to an academy should we go to the next question? Any more confusions with any question? Chalo, badia, very nice. Okay. On mild mechanical trauma, the following lesions involved in a 24-year-old patient. The lesion from erosion, the lesion forms the erosions and heal without scar formation. So I want my plus students. I've recently covered this topic. Bhavya. Then uh, Ravi, who else? Salman, Melar. I hope you all are live in these classes. So please tell me the answer here. Okay, okay. Now please remember, if an adult patient presents to you with the erosion, spontaneous erosion on the trauma-prone area, always think about EB simplex. Because in EB junctional and in EB dystrophic, the, the patient will present soon at the time of birth. They will have presentation soon at the time of birth, and the mother will give you a history that when I hold the baby, when I uh, you know change the clothes of the baby, the skin gets peel off. But in EB simplex, you will see the lesions when a patient or when a baby starts to walk, or when he become more functional himself. Okay? In EB simplex, the problem is in keratin. 5 and 14. The problem is in keratin 5 and 14. Uh, Ariva, very nice. Shatnik, uh, it was a very, very nice uh, thing that you got uh, rank 169 in combat. And I request you to please keep maintaining it. Okay, so very well done. Uh, what about the other students? And can you tell me how many students uh, were there, total students? Do you got any idea about the total students who have given in our combat? 1200. 1500 okay so not bad uh it, it is a good rank not not a bad rank and i think uh, shatnik uh, if you have 169 rank you will get 25 percent off on your uh, neat pg subscription uh, on your plus subscription if you take it for one year you will get 25 percent off like usually there is 10 percent off but you will get 25 percent off so please use my referral code all those who have got the rank under 200, they will have uh, uh, like from 150 to 200, it is 25%. And like that, they have a different uh, categories. So please try to take the subscription with 25%. Off. Okay, Dichalo. So I think we are done with all the questions. Do you have any confusions? Any confusion with respect to the topics which we have touched upon today? All of you want to ask anything related to dermatology? A common question, how many questions in dermatology in FMG usually we get? So please remember 8 to 10 questions for sure. 8 to 10 questions for sure in the, from dermatology in FMG. And in NEET PG for this year, we had 13 to 14 questions. Okay, 13, 14 questions. Okay, uh, Safo syndrome is seen in which disease? Acne. Acne. It is actually a metabolic syndrome or hyperandrogenism. So it is a feature of hyperandrogenism or a metabolic syndrome okay now please remember uh, i want all of you to go with this subscription we are starting from tomorrow the neat pg batch so i request you to please be a part of this neat pg 2022 batch ma'am can you tell important topics for fmg infectious disease very important dr gk std very very important followed by psoriasis and vesicular bullous disorder and obviously cutaneous malignancy to very important okay na? Uh, because here also, see, in Sapho syndrome, uh, like synovitis and osteitis can also be because of autoimmune conditions, right? So they have some common features for all of them. Okay, Mani? Okay, so I think we are done with all the questions. Any more confusions? So bye-bye all of you. All the best. Please be live every day at 2.30 p.m. for these one-hour sessions. Tomorrow we have one more class at 9 p.m. And I wish and I want all of you to please be live. That is for INICT quick revision. So if anybody with INICT uh, uh, preparations, please do come. 
uh, uh, Richard, definitely the endocrine disorders and skin features are a common uh, questions. So you can join my plus course for those features. Okay. So bye bye. Take care and good day.